it is finally here. Nikon's first full frame mirrorless camera. For now, it's at least the company's flagship. It is priced at um, 3,400 bucks, weighing in at about half the price of an Nikon D5, for example. This actually isn't so bad and it has a lot of features, a lot of specs to offer. I got the kit version. So you get two boxes. You get the, uh, the 2470 f4 lens and you get the camera body. Looks like this here, okay? Um, now there's also a more affordable version that's costing $2,000, uh, the Z6. And that's coming in about a month or a month after this. So, um, you know, besides Nikon, this kind of seems to be the season for full frame mirrorless cameras as uh, Canon and even Panasonic are also jumping in on that mirrorless bandwagon. What makes this camera, the Z7, special and so groundbreaking for Nikon is that they have reinvented their lens mount system. They call it the Z mount. Can you look at this here? Focus on this. Okay, huh. here we go. Now we can focus on this. They call it the Z mount, you know, with the large much larger, well, let me try this again here. With a much larger diameter of, 40, of 55 millimeters as compared to the old ones, um, which were uh, 44, I believe, by comparison. So this means that this diameter lets in 50 or over 50% more light as far as the square inches go or square centimeters. You know, this means that it is this allows for increased optical performance. So Nikon will be able to make lenses with, uh, which are even bigger, with wider apertures, with f-stops in the range of f1.0. You know, they also claim focusing wide open and corner sharpness should be improved as well, as you can let in the light more of in a straight lines into the sensor instead of being curved at the angle. So. Uh, coupled with that is the uh, extremely short flange. So coupled with that is extremely short flange distance of only 16 millimeters. Uh, so that's only about, I don't know, three quarters of an inch. The short flange distance allows Nikon and others to make lens adapters to basically be able to mount any lens from any brand on the market today. So this is Nikon's FTZ adapter here. And notice it is hollow. You can put your fingers through it, okay? Um, but I think they'll follow suit with uh, multiple ones because uh, Canon, for example, has four different ones from uh, drop-in filter adapters to variable and even uh, on, like a neutral density variable filters. And they range in price for Canon from 100 to 400 bucks. So the FTZ adapter, uh, you can count 11 contact points on the Z-mount side, and I believe only two, four, six, eight contact points on the F-mount side. That means this has, uh, the new Z-mount has additional logic uh, and it can support, you know, some new features we haven't seen yet. Maybe that silent focusing or whatnot is because of these contacts. Okay, here we go, much better. Um, so, you know, I wish they, uh, they had released mirrorless cameras, uh, you know, Nikon released their mirrorless offering like this one um, years ago, like Sony. Um, not sure why they're so late. Um, but anyway, uh, this just seems like it's the most interesting year uh, in a long time when it comes to digital cameras and especially mirrorless camera releases. I remember when the D850 came out and everybody was baffled, but by uh, such amazing specs and um, you know now we're used to these awesome specs so many megapixel as and as such a good uh, performance so this shares a lot of that you know the specs on this camera they're very interesting you know also you know starting with 45.7 megapixels backside illuminated sensor that's abbreviated bsi now this translates into the resolution of whopping like 8256 by 5504 pixels, you know, which is more than anybody needs, like average, I mean, average photographer needs. So this stuff is in the realm of uh, 8K and actually a bit above 8K resolution. 
you know, there isn't like a computer monitor out there or a TV that's able to reproduce the native resolution of this magnitude. Um, some of the 8K stuff is very, very close. You know, having too many pixels is never bad, you know, unless you have to like process thousands of these images, you know, like wedding photographers do. Sorry, got a little off topic here, you know. Um, you know, we're talking about the image quality here and not workflow. And, and the image quality is really, really amazing. Um, it's also amazing is that Nikon was able to to put in a 5-axis image stabilization inside the body of that camera. Um, and, you know, this is probably one of the greatest assets. Um, you know, if I was buying a camera without internal sensor stabilization in 2018, you know, I'd be really, really carefully calculating if, if that's what I want, okay? So Nikon, you know, they're trying to get into the video game um, as well. You know, they, they're offering very impressive video specs. Um, unfortunately, 4K taps out at, at 30p, still no 60. So come on, Nikon, you really have nothing to lose here. You know, it's not like you have a video camera. They're offering a 10-bit HDMI out. However, uh, excuse me. However, that that only um, the 10 b HDMI out only works um, with the external recorder. You can't record that internally. Um, and on top of it, all the video modes are limited to 30 minutes in length. And you know, if you want to go above that, you have to get a real camera for that. Let's talk about the body of this camera. Um, you know, it's again, it just seems like a baby Nikon D850. Uh, so the main body is, is built out of magnesium, covered in some nice plastic. Uh, magnesium alloy um, is, you know, very strong. Uh, I think it gets casted very easily. and Not very easily, but there's a good process for it. And it's, it's very light, you know, has a huge strength to weight ratio. So I have one issue though. I, I do wish that they made this body a bit bigger. Um, and what really makes me mad is they put these two of these buttons here, the, the play and delete button on the left side. Um, if there's only two buttons here, Nikon, move them to this side so I don't have to like use two hands or reach over. This is, uh, in my opinion, kind of not ergonomic. You just put them here or put a touch screen in there or something. Um, yeah, just reaching over to the left side, that kind of gets annoying. Um, so while we're at it, why don't we just move all these controls to the right side so I can leave the left side doing something else or maybe I'm just playing with this or maybe I'm holding a cell phone in my camera. Obviously it's no surprise that they're planning on making uh, more lenses or a new line of lenses and even bigger lenses with this new wider aperture or wider opening uh, mount, okay? So why didn't they think of making a camera to match the lens size? You know, if they're gonna do a zoom with f2.0, I would, I would like to see a camera size of a D850. It doesn't have to have the same thickness, but at least the same size. And fill it in, make a bigger screen. It's just my opinion. You know, we all, buying this, we all knew this was not a pocketable camera. So, you know, seriously. Um, so with this camera being so small, the battery grip is not optional. Um, you know, that's just what I think. It, it's, uh, as it's not comfortable to hold, at least if you have gigantic paws like me, um, and I can put it, only hold it with two, maybe three fingers, four, it's like really cramped. I feel like the wrist would hurt me if I use this all day. So the mechanical shutter is still here, similar to the D850. Um, I believe it's tested for 200,000 cycles. The Z7 can shoot continuously at 9 frames per second, uh, but only at 5.5 with continuous autofocus. All right, let me move these boxes here. So according to Nikon, the weather forecast doesn't matter. You know, the Z7 is extensively weather sealed against any kind of dust or moisture. I mean, falling from the top, not like submerging this. Um, and all the new Z lenses and FTZ mount, this one here, um, you know, they're all weather sealed. So Nikon says there is no need to baby this camera. Actually, I took it off their website. They, they say that. Yeah, there's some rubber gaskets here. So 
only a single rubber gasket but that may prove to be enough uh, yeah so the they're all on the lenses so we shall see now uh, focus and focusing modes this one is a big one um, so this camera here has 493 on sensor out of focus points I believe the Z6 has only 260 uh, so they're covering 90% of the frame vertically or horizontally uh, the autofocus processor you know can automatically shift between focal plane and face detection AF to fine-tune and in my other uh, focusing video I think you've seen that you know with this lens it was the focusing was actually slower so I think the autofocusing processor was kind of confused or doing something in there I don't know. All right, well, this all kind of translates into very, very accurate focusing, you know, even in low light, like I mentioned, minus 4 EV. Um, so, and, and also focusing has uh, face tracking, so I can follow a person in the crowd. Uh, now let's go into a viewfinder and screen. With mirrorless, you get, obviously, a digital viewfinder. And this one here is a nice one. It has 3.6 million dots. So for the LCD, they went with the standard size, it seems, uh, 3.2 inch screen. Uh, I wish they actually went with something bigger, made this body a, a tad, just a tad bigger. Um, you know, like I mentioned, to me, the body size of a D850 is perfect. Uh, just make the D850 mirrorless. This way we can, you know, with all these megapixels, it's easier to see if something's in focus or out of focus. The touch screen options work really well on it as well. Um, you know, the, the screen is really bright and crisp. You can easily tell what you're shooting, what you're focusing on. Let me focus on my face here. So uh, I just wish one more thing here, that this had a full articulation, not just tilt up and down. Um, again, this is a bummer if you're a vlogger. Um, you know, a lot of times, like if I use a Canon, like right now, I'm able to click on my face in the front and get the camera focus on my face then I can click on a camera uh, you know I can't do that with an icon if I use it see we're focusing on a camera here focus back focus to the front so if I was using an icon or Nikon then I can't do that because the screens in the back side so let's go back to the touch screen you know that kind of touch screen and the menu system all this stuff just keeps getting better and better um, you know, all this stuff is nicely incorporated and you can change all the menu items via touch screen or use the buttons here. So what Nikon just needs to do is move this touch screen, touch screen functionality to the, you know, Nikon, what is it, the snap bridge. Uh, especially in the video mode, it's like so severely limited. All it allows you is just to kind of uh, record and stop. I uh, can't tell the exposures. I think the focus works. I uh, can't adjust any of the settings. Here we go, is this in focus? Okay, ports and connectivity. Uh, so you can see all the ports here, as with all cameras, just, they're all just on the left side of the camera. So on the top, we have, um, let me focus on this here. We have USB-C and mini HDMI port, and also some connector multi-interface link. Uh, then we have a, standard three and a half millimeter headphone jack and a microphone jack okay so that actually works pretty well and then we have wireless connectivity you know the bluetooth and wi-fi capabilities uh you know they're all fine like i said for photos but for video they, they just like severely limited um you know uh through the app so you can connect to the z7 directly or you can connect uh, via a network um, you know, Bluetooth is used for like, um, you know, when you turn off this camera, what's really, really nice, you can take these pictures, turn off the camera, and it will automatically send the photos to your phone. However, um, the resolution settings are limited. You can either send a two megapixel image or a full image. So clearly that app is in the need of an update Nikon. How about a 16 megapixel setting? How about 24? How about I can just pick any megapixels instead of just two or 46? 46 is way too much for my phone, but two is not enough. So anyway, uh, I found that these snap bridges are whatnot, not just with Nikon, but with any camera, 
they're not 100% reliable. And at least me or I, I always have to fiddle and reconnect at times, um, you know, no matter which camera I'm using. So power, uh, power, that's actually a nice one here. So it uses the standard, actually this is the B type battery. Focus on that, um, this way. So this is the B version of the ELB15. Um, they're claiming that this will, the rating, the CIPA rating of 330 shots when using just the EVF. Uh, storage, uh, what can we say? Gotta use these expensive, but super, super fast XQD cards, okay? Um, and they're blazing fast. I mean, it's just like, whew, you know, and uh, yeah, they're supposedly like 400 mega bytes, megabits per second. Um, yeah, okay. Um, <clears throat> I think I uh, never really had problems with the SD card as long as the buffer in the camera exists. So, conclusion. You know, I think this here, if we can focus on it, this here is a great, 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 great camera. Think of it as a mini D850 in terms of uh, at least image performance. Uh, for most, you have more megapixels than you'll ever, ever need. Um, you know, so many, it's important to pay attention to how you shoot your uh, photos. Is if you misfocus very slightly, maybe two pixels become one or four become one or eight become one. So um, a crappy focusing job could reduce your 45 megapixels to like two megapixels effective image, obviously. Anyway, um, and also shake, you know, all the other stuff kind of renders all of your pixels kind of useless. So keeping it steady, uh, checking your settings or whatnot, if you wanna have absolute sharpness, that's extremely important with so many megapixels. Like I said, the performance of this camera is, is uh, it's just like, wow, okay. Um, you know, you get the bright screen and a really nice uh, viewfinder, fast focusing, accurate and silent. You know, there just like isn't much to complain. If you wanna nitpick, obviously we can nit, uh, nitpick, you know, to, or just complain or pixel peep and this is bad, that's bad. I just say, if you want a new camera, I don't think you'll be much disappointed with this. Now for video, uh, this is Nikon's best video camera yet. Again, with silent and accurate focusing, I can really see serious uh, video makers or event videographers, weddings especially, using this. I think battery life is very acceptable. Uh, package is actually not too big. You get the, you get the focus peaking features, you get uh, I think zebra patterns here as well. Um, you can have touch focus for face tracking. So that's really gonna help you in your wedding business. That's what I think. Uh, probably don't have to get a Z7 for that. You could get a Z6 and save some money. So finally, what I'm really happy about is uh, that there's some competition out there. That means we'll get better cameras with better features. Maybe uh, just have to wait two, three years until they release the next one. Do you wanna wait? I don't know. Again, body seems a bit small, but with the battery grip, we will solve the issue. If you don't need 46 megapixels, wait for the Z6, which is a bit faster and cheaper alternative, costing only $2,000, right? All right, well, this was it. This is the Z7, check it out. Well, let's focus on that. All right, well, this was it. You have watched the channel of SLR Tom. Comment, share, subscribe, let me know what you liked or didn't like. Uh, I think I'm getting a little better with these videos. It was, was kind of really a chore at the beginning, but uh, you know, practice makes perfect. You know, just get off your butt and do things. So, peace, see you in the